Welcome to Intro to Functional Programming in Haskell. Today we're going to be talking further about types and type classes. Types are a core feature of Haskell. As a matter of fact, the type of any expression, value, or function can be explicitly stated by the programmer within the code. However, the language also has a strong capability to infer the type of a variety of expressions that are written in code at compile time. So why all this fuss about types? What do they do for us? Well, within functional programming, one of the principles we try to adhere to is working with code that behaves as predictably as possible. Typing helps us do this. Typing helps regulate the code we produce in such a way that it will adhere as closely to, as possible to mental models that we come up with. For example, one of the benefits of working in a language with a strong type system and an intelligent type inference capability is that if you write an expression which you then explicitly take state of having a certain type, if the language looks at the expression itself and due to its ability to infer types sees that it is impossible for that expression to evaluate to a type that you describe in your explicit type declaration then it knows to give you an alert at compile time that you have something wrong in your logic. This is one of the many benefits that we get for free in Haskell for having a strong type system. We can declare new types in Haskell using data declarations. Data declarations not only allow you to name your own new type, but they allow you to define the potential values that may exist within that type. An example is shown here. Type classes, as we've discussed before, are akin to interfaces. They describe how data is used rather than what it is. Types that you make use of a given type class are said to have an instance of that type class. The example type signature shown here describes a function that takes two values of type A, both of which must have an instance of the type class EQ, and this function results in a bool. Haskell's capability to infer types is actually extended by type classes. For instance, in the previous example, there are parameters that are of type A. At compile time, initially, at least, the language doesn't know what type A is, but it, it can deduce that whatever A is, it must be a type that does have an instance of the EQ type class, which limits the possibilities for what type A can be. Furthermore, Haskell's tracking of types evolves over time as functions are applied. For example, if you have a function that takes an A and another A and returns an A, if this function is applied to an int, we know that the remaining argument and the return value of this function has to be an int. The ability of the language to infer types is aware of this as well, so when this function is applied to an int, the implied signature of this function then becomes a function that takes an int and returns an int. This concept of knowing something about a type but not knowing explicitly what it is, is more formally expressed as polymorphism. Specifically, we deal with two main kinds of polymorphism. Parametric polymorphism, where we truly know nothing about the given types, such as in this type signature that describes a function that takes an A and a B and returns an A. We do not know the type of A or the type of B. However, we do know that it returns a value that is of the same type as the first argument. The other kind of polymorphism is constrained polymorphism. This is where we know that a given ambiguous type must at least have an instance of a particular type class, therefore giving us more information about what types it could be. In a bit of a reverse situation, we can actually give the language specific values and it not know what the type of those values are until evaluation time. Take, for example, writing the expression 3 plus 3 in the REPL. The type of the number 3 could be int, it could be integer, it could be anything which can be validly represented by the number 3. So the type system then actually keeps its definition of this ex expression as general as possible. 
noting that its type is actually a constrained parametric type that is constrained to all of the type classes that are implied by anything that can be represented by the number 3. Now we can specify the type of an expression in the code itself to help the language know what the type of the result of the expression will be upon valuation. When the language evaluates an expression, types must become concrete. Now if we do not specify a type for the language, it will simply default to a type that is specified in a library somewhere. There exists a concept of inheritance almost in type classes. More specifically, type classes can essentially define prerequisites. For example, we need the ability to compare if two values are equal before we can even begin to have the possibility to put values in order, which is why the or type class actually requires the type that is instantiating it to also have an instance of the EQ type class. And before we can begin to enumerate the values of a type, we must have the ability to put its values in order. Which, if you're confused about this concept of enumeration, enumeration simply describes the, the ability to produce a range of values based on an upper and lower bound. For example, integers are able, able to be enumerated. Enum defines a function enum from 2. Enum from 2 of 1 and 5 yields the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So to finish off this lesson, let's get back to some more broad concepts about functional programming. Our exploration of types and type classes helped us realize our capability and need to know and be able to predict as well as verify the behavior of our code. However, another goal of ours within functional programming is minimizing the effects of our code and controlling effects as much as possible. By effects, we mean anything that does something other than calculate a value. Effects change the state of something somewhere. Anything that has an effect is den denoted by the type IO. For example, the function show internally calls another function called print. This displays text to the console. This does more than just calculate a value. It affects something somewhere. It affects the display on your screen. This is an effect. So the return type of show actually is IO. This concept of utilizing IO to denote effectful chains of events can be extended. For example, a function that returns something of type IO string would imply that this function does things that has effect and then also returns a string to you, as opposed to show, which just has an effect and doesn't really bring you back anything of value. Another goal of ours in functional programming is working with as reliable of code as possible. So take, for example, the function read. It tries to turn strings or text into a value for a given type. Now, not every single possible combination of text can possibly be turned into, say, a, a, at least a sensible integer. Or, and the same holds true for a variety of types. So read is not guaranteed to return a valid value, or necessarily return at all. We describe read as being a partial function. We strive to work with complete functions in functional programming, functions that are guaranteed to return. Before we move forward, let's quickly review some of the type classes we've already mentioned, as well as one or two new ones. The bounded type class describes types whose values have an upper and lower bound. The enum type class describes types whose values can be directly enumerated. The eq type class describes types whose values can be tested for equality, either or inequality. The or type class describes values that can be put in order. More specifically, it, allow, it describes types whose values can be compared using less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. 
the read type class describes types that can have their values produced by parsing a string in some way. The show type class describes types that can have their values rendered to a string. Specifically, this is used for displaying things in the command line interface.